Technically, throat is yeah. still there, and then the second yep. voice note is like, okay, like I'm halfway through, then I start to cough, and I'm like, he doesn't want to hear that first thing in the morning at five a.m. Do you know what I mean? So let let me go. I again. do the exact same thing. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yep. Um, I do a couple yeah. takes. Usually, my first one is just a dry run to figure out how am I going to welcome you into <laughs> my day. So I jump in with like a what up and then I'm like, that's too much. He's he's like literally my best friend. I'm not going to give him a what up. So then I, I go with like, let me Cali it up for him a little bit since he's, you know, in the UK. I'll give him like, what up, brah. And then I'm like, stop. I don't speak like that. So it, it's it's it's, so a, you're, it's a thing. You're not, you're not the only one who like redoes voice notes. <laughs> Oh, dude. Well, man, first of all, not to anyone else, just to you, because I'm just like, <laughs> oh, man, I'm just, how am I going to get him? Like I said, for you, you're midday, but it's 5 a.m. for me when I send you my first voice note. So yeah. I just want to I just want to welcome you into the California sunshine uh -huh. the best I can. And I and I feel like, uh, hey, man, got your voice note. Like, that's not enough. Come I on. Know. I know what you mean. I haven't talked to you all day. I, I get to the five-minute mark, and I'm like, go again. There's like <laughs> one and a half minutes of like actual things that you, like might should know about or care about. So I condense it from five minutes to like one and a half minutes. So you can imagine the voice notes that I do send you that are five minutes. You can imagine how long they were at the start. If I if I oh. if I've just got it down to five minutes, it was like an eleven uh. minute banger, and I'm just like, what am I doing? No one no one has this time to listen to me. Okay, speaking of that. There's two terms that I'm that are British terms, and I'm not fully understanding the difference, but I think I know, but I okay. don't ever want to use them out of turn. Sometimes you say you're waffling, right? And I think yeah. I know what that means. <laughs> just kind of spinning your wheels. Uh, just You're just talking to talk, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're just keeping yourself company. Yep. Just straight okay. up. So waffling, like I get. Brain now, what's the difference between talking, waffling? Waffling. Right. What's the difference mm -hmm. between waffling and flapping? Because we don't use either of those terms. Like, oh man, oh, flapping. So, yeah. Is that like worrying whilst waffling? <laughs> yeah. Flapping, yeah, flapping is like you're you're stressing <laughs> out and you're just you're being a bit irrational and you're you might be like a bit hectic and you're <sighs> you're just flapping. You're you're stressed basically. It's, it's okay. another word for stressed. It's funny. Okay. I never say flapping, but yeah, like when yeah, it's definitely an English. I hear thing. it in a lot of British podcasts of YouTubers that have taken on too big of a car payment just so they can make a cool YouTube video, and they're like, "I'm I'm flapping a bit over the McLaren's payments," and I'm like, "Okay," and then like people will laugh at them like, "Man, he was flapping hard," and I'm like, "Okay, does that mean worrying? Is that different than waffling?" So yeah, I yeah, think I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if I was if I was paying for a McLaren, I would definitely be flapping, mate. I would be all over the shop with just emotions and stressing and everything else <laughs> under the sun, basically. So solid flapping. <laughs> all right. Well, let's solid get into flapping, this mate. week's episode. Uh, welcome into Drum with Mike and Eddie, the podcast where all we talk about is drums, 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 drums. <laughs> and uh, if you've never joined us before, I hope that you have an, a, a good hour hanging out with us where we just get to talk about what we go through as drummers and i don't even think this podcast really anymore is just for drummers it's for creatives it's for artists it's for people that chase their passions and that's what we talk about we're going to get into that a little bit today I want to welcome in some cats in our live hang so if you are a patreon or a patron you get to hang with us live during the recording of these podcasts so I just want to welcome in jim john trevor carlos julian Kieran, a couple other folks, thank you guys for hanging out with us and sharing your morning with us. Brother, you <laughs> have some big stuff going on that we still are like, now we're like, what, hours away from being allowed to talk about it? Yeah, we're about three hours away from talking about it. And I was debating talking about it on this podcast, but like, I don't want to, I don't want to, because yeah, we would have to pretend, because this is coming out on Monday. And I'm announcing right. in three hours. We would have to like pretend like, oh yeah, it went really well, and like I kind of don't want to do that. So right, yeah, yeah. For the for the people in the chat today, go to my Instagram for six p.m. and uh, it's kind of a big thing for me, man. It's been going on for a while. It's a massive thing. It's probably it's one a of the massive biggest, thing, huge thing actually. I don't know what I'm on about. <laughs> um, a load of people are like sliding in my DMs, mate, and they're saying like, is it a signature product? Are you playing for this new artist? And blah blah blah. Has anyone I, guessed correctly? Nope. I don't think uh, yeah. anyone. I don't think anyone thinks this this day would ever come. To be honest with you, right? Do you know what I mean? So, um, so yeah, yeah p people in the live chat, mate, head over, 
and uh, check it out, man, because it's, it's been it's and exciting. And feel free in the live chat to throw in your guesses, because I would love to see what you guys think. Because I won't be able to, since... I won't be able to hide it. I won't be able to hide it if you get it right. Uh, Kieran, you did not get it right. Um, uh, and honestly, Kieran, you did not get it right. But I think that as somebody that's gone through this part of the journey with you, this is going to be a, a, a major game-changing thing for you and your career, and I'm really excited about it. So I can't wait to tell people about it later. Uh, we're also getting closer to being able to tell people about my new company. Mm -hmm. And by the way, guys, Eddie and I are not the teasing sorts. Like We don't talk about this ahead of time. Like, let's tease it so they listen. I freaking hate teases in podcasts. Same. Like, dude, just tell Same. me. Just tell me. I don't give a crap. I don't care enough for you to hide it from me. Mate, um, it was like the 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 announcement I'm just about to do in three hours. Like, um, we were talking about that. We were talking about like, oh, should we tease it? And I was like, mate, I'll I'll do one story the day before, and that's it. Like, no one. Yeah. Like, it's like when Blink came back. You know, um, they, they just uh, came they, back. Just came back. They announced like on Wednesday. Like, there's a new song on Friday. It's like people's attention span is so short. I think right. all you need to do, and plus, you know, I'm not flipping Justin Bieber, mate. Do you know what I mean? No one cares. All, all, the, all they need is a little, a little 12 hours notice, 24 hours notice. Yeah. Um, so, well, yeah, mate, I, I I'm mean, excited. Just for the listeners, I want you guys to know the teasing of this is all like contractual and business related. It's not like a way to hype up the podcast, but yeah, we will tell all. you, uh, well, you'll find all about uh, Eddie's announcement in a few hours, or if you're listening to this on Monday, you've already found out about it. Please send him a DM. Let him know your thoughts. And yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'll let you guys know about what I've got going on. Probably in, I would say about a month is when I oh, okay. it. So earlier yeah, than I would think. expected. Yeah, I think I'll announce it before um, maybe... I don't want to, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to watch what you're saying. I mean, I don't, right I don't want to use the term pre-orders, <laughs> but if, we, if we're going to do some pre-orders, we're going to do some pre-orders. We'll yeah, see. nice, um, man. Mate, so we'll see what happens times, with mate. that. But real things that we can talk about are PASIC is now, holy, wait, what's today? Thursday, Friday. I got I got an email about it. Oh, if you're attending uh, PASIC, Zildjian and Vic Firth are hanging out. And I was like, I'm not, but I forgot how close that was. And I bet Mike has seen this email and gone, okay, yep, yep, back in the practice. Yeah, that email caused me to <laughs> flap a bit. Oh, there you go. <laughs> that email was making you flap around the studio. Mate. It was. I was like, oh my God, this thing's really happening. So yeah, uh, PASIC is coming up uh, this time next week. Uh, well, if you're listening to this on Monday, then whatever. But this time next week in real time, I will be there in Indianapolis. I am playing Ballroom 500, so the main performance center. I'll be playing Ballroom 500 on Saturday at 11 a.m. So if mm -hmm. you guys want to come out... Please come out and hang. I try to make my clinics a chance to release the stress of all the clinics you've seen. Because if you go to all the greatest drummers in the world and watch them play, it starts to add up. And you're like, why am I even doing this? I'm the opposite. <laughs> Basically, the whole time you're watching me, you're going, dude, if he can do it, I can totally do this. I got this. That's like the vibe I'm trying to create is like, look, we're all in this together. It doesn't matter whether you're learning your first groove and your first fill or you've been playing your whole life you mm -hmm. still feel the exact same way, right? When you're mm -hmm. trying to learn anything, you still feel like a child. <laughs> yeah, yeah, literally. That's what I felt like earlier, mate. I sat down at the kit just before this podcast and I was learning a song and I went for this idea that was in my head and I just couldn't do it. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I still I still feel like uh, I can barely even spell drums, let alone perform at a, at a masterclass or a clinic. But mate, I'm, you know what? When I saw that email, I was half tempted to book a flight and surprise you and sit front row and go, go on, Mike. Oh. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Dude, that Just... would be so epic. <laughs> and the, the Zildjian dinner is the only dinner you and I can attend together legally because yep. I'm a Vic Firth guy. You're a Zildjian guy. It's mm -hmm. the same dinner. It's the same dinner. I know. It's one of those dinners where like those, those dinners at drum shows are so, they're not awkward, but it is like, it's like being in a different mob in new york do you know what i mean it's it, like you've got the zildjian family you've got the minor family and like you want to go over and you kind of do but then you feel the zildjian eyes on the back of your head when you walk over to the minor totally. table totally and then you feel like and then you're with promark and some of your mates are on the 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 like vic firth table and you just you're like oh it's is he crazy staying? is he staying oh he's having a drink he's having a drink all right we've lost him he's he's, a, he's <laughs> gone he's gone cut, cut him all off. right 
All right. <laughs> Looks like Mike just signed with Soul Tone. I'm like, dude, I, <laughs> literally, I went to high school with that guy. I have to say hello. I'm not signing with Soul Tone. I just want to say hi to Bobby. I haven't seen Bobby in, in days, uh, man. God. Oh, Bobby. Yeah, it is uh, it is crazy. The, the other thing I find really awkward about those dinners is you you all meet somewhere, but you never meet at the restaurant. You meet somewhere, and then you walk over in your Minel crew or yeah. your Gretsch crew or whatever. But then you have to enter the restaurant, and then you're thinking, well, there's six artists here that I don't know. There's three that I'd really like to sit next to, and there's yeah. one that's actually my freaking idol. I'd love to sit next to him or her. And so you're kind of like moving around, like, uh, I'm going to go wash my hands real quick, and I'm going to come back and stand next to the person that I want to sit next to. That is the whole who you're going to sit next to is cr- It is, because <laughs> whoever you sit next to, you only get two to three people's worth of distance of conversation. Yep. So it's like, mm-hmm. great, great. Yep. I'm with the you're drummer literally- from <laughs> the Violent <laughs> Femmes, but it's not even the original <laughs> drummer. It's like some guy that replaced the drummer in the Violent Femmes. I was going to sit next to freaking Dave Weckl. Now I'm Mate, sitting was- next to Bob. That was literally what happened to me at the UK drum show. We went for a pro Mark Evans dinner, and I'm not going to lie. I think I pushed the the waitress out the way, bless her. I think she fully stacked it. I think a tray of beers went out the way. I was like, woof, I'm sitting next to you, mate. I don't know anyone else here. Um, But anyway, mate, so so last, sorry to cut you off. I just, before I forget, last episode when we were talking about what what it's like to get a, a signature product made, we briefly touched yeah. on the subject of you not having your name on your signature products and we didn't really get into it and i think um a lot of people would l- would like to know one why and how and if i don't know if that's been done before has it i don't think so i don't um, think any other drama has of. everyone's got the ego mate everyone needs it on there do you know what i mean they do they need it on there <laughs> their ego's in the wrong place if you want to make money off the royalties get your name off the damn product here we go that's now, just how now it we're works. talking the talk we're now we're talking okay about so talk. so that is the reality of the situation the reality is it's all based off of my experience as a drummer coming up as a teenager um i remember my favorite feeling sticks in the world and this was not even a fan thing that i worked at a drum shop and so my favorite sticks from like say 16 to 21 were the dave weckl vic firth sticks they were like kind of, kind of like this maroon almost purple oh, no. color not purple but kind of maroon I they seemed to I was like I don't know what Dave's doing over there but he he worked a deal because those sticks never broke. I would whittle them down to like toothpicks and they were still holding on and then I'd get a pair of Vic Firth 5As and I'd be like boom snap. Oh, come on, man. So I was like, all right. The Daves are the jam. And this like I said this was not I'm more of a Weckl fan now than I was back then. Um mm-hmm. so and then I stopped playing them because Oh, I lost Eddie. I'm here, mate. I can hear. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Looks like you just you were like, I'm not gonna show you my video anymore. <laughs> I'm here, um, mate. <laughs> so, so I was playing the Weckl sticks, and then all of a sudden, I got to a point where I just said, I I want to be Dave Weckl or the next Dave Weckl. Like, I don't want to play someone else's products. I want to have my name on sticks one day. And so that was almost like a lesson in itself. It taught me wow, like this is one of my favorite drummers. I love the product and I'm not willing to play it because someone's name is on it. And someday I want to be at the level that I have my name on something. So Mm -hmm. that was, I mean, obviously I wasn't thinking reality-wise that I'd ever have signature products, but when it came time to do signature products, that's when I just said like, well, if I want other people to enjoy these products, if I want other people to play them, that basically they'd have to be a Mike Johnston fan, which makes me want to just barf in my mouth. Yeah. to play these products and then the other thing because because my name's going to be on it and then the other thing is well what about other artists i mean there's so many minor artists that the transition ride is their main ride uh, there's no way that would be happening if it was the mike johnston ride no way yeah there's no no mean. not a chance in hell there's a ton of gretch artists that have the brooklyn standard as their main snare or one of their snares no way if that was the mike johnston snare so yeah mm. so products wise the sticks as because we developed them on this podcast those are the any ones my name is nowhere on them uh both the ride and the snare uh the ride is the transition ride it does have my name on the bottom of the bell but it's 
the bottom of the bell is so dark and the engraving barely shows up. So, I mean, you'd have to, most people don't even know it's there. Yeah, um, for sure. The Brooklyn Standard, I sign a little, uh, a little sticker that goes on the inside of the shell. So you wouldn't know my name is anywhere on that drum until you change your head. And maybe then you don't even, and I don't even know if it says it in text. It's like my signature. My signature looks like I fell down a staircase with a pen in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, it's just like a shape. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and then the cowbell is called the groove bell. Um, and so mm. that's the only one that my signature is on the outside of it because there's nowhere. If you put it on the inside, I mean, you'd have to have a flashlight <laughs> to see. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. it's still in like black text on the dark cowbell. But the big thing, it's not where my name is on the product. That doesn't really matter. It's the marketing. And so I have a meeting with these companies. And I say, look, it can never be marketed as the Mike Johnston snare drum or the Mike Johnston rights. Well, it has to be marketed as the name. Let it be its own thing. If people find out that I was behind it at some point, that's great. But it's worked because there's nothing I have. Well, I don't know the numbers on the cowbell, but because I just I don't compare people's cowbells number cowbell numbers. <laughs> but there's nothing I have that didn't become the best selling thing in its class over time because and I think it's because I keep my name off the stuff. The other thing is mm. because we talked about it a little bit in the last podcast, but I don't really develop stuff for, uh, I'm always developing it with my students in mind. So it's a versatile ride symbol, a versatile snare drum. So that allows it to be sold to more people compared to, you know, like a bell brass snare where it's like, there's only a few individuals that need something like yeah. that. So it's cool. It's interesting, man. But I think, um, the only time it really works with like, you know, your signature and your name and all that kind of stuff on it is when it's so uniquely different that you, you want to use it because, because of that, like, like the, the, a perfect example is the sticks Carter made Carter McLean sticks. Like totally. It's like you, his name's on them because it's like, he designed this and it's so specific and so different that yeah, his name should be on it. Do you know what I mean? So I think that's I think when it works. Yeah, with Carter, the, I think it. I think it could work with a Carter, a JoJo Mayer, like when the person is known for having phenomenal touch and phenomenal technique. Mm -hmm. Then the thing that they put in their hands, you want to know exactly what that is because somehow it's almost like you think like, well, if I had those sticks, I could have that touch too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So for sure. I think it does matter when the person's technique comes into play for sure. Like. I think it'd be really weird if Carter's name wasn't on it because the whole mm -hmm. point is like, I wonder how Carter gets that sound. Um, mm -hmm. And I also think it works for very famous people like Questlove, Travis Barker, Chad Smith. Yeah. Um, in those instances, it works. It always works as far as like, it's cool. Like you have a signature product. It's just global sales are not even, I mean, you know, there's... That's a uh, God, such a douchey. I don't even want to talk about it. But <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it's, I mean, like, the, the products that I have helped create outsell all the the top, not the top signature products, but the top products. Like, mm -hmm. you know, we've outsold the 5A in Vic Firth. That's yeah, insane. That's not, yeah, like, that is insane. So I'm not, like, competing with, like, Josh Freeze, or I don't, I don't think he plays for Vic Firth. That that probably went over real well at Vader. They're like, did we just lose Josh? Um, but I'm I'm competing with like, all right, I want to beat the seven A. I want to beat the five A. I yeah. want to know like what is Gretsch's main snare drum? Chrome over brass. I want to beat the chrome over brass sales wise. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, so that's and for you know you and I are in a weird place where like our status seems to be more, at least maybe it's just, you know, my own complex, but it seems to be more in flux than the drummers I look up to where I'm like, oh, well he or she's just, they're on the top of the mountain. They'll always be there. I literally mm -hmm. feel like if I have a bad selling signature <laughs> symbol felt, it's over, career's over. Word got out around this, word got out. Mike did not sell enough symbol felts. And I'm like, oh, yeah, gosh, it's over. Yeah. So yeah, I'm so yeah I put a lot of pressure on myself when it comes to signature products. Yeah, I mean, rightly so, because you only get one shot, you know? It's not like you can say to them, oh, you know, oh, my snare didn't do well, but I think if it was if it was Maple instead of Birch, it would have sold a lot, a lot better, you know? You only get one. It's like being a major label. Well, it's like signing to a major label. It's very rare that you will leave that or get dropped from that label and then go sign another major label deal. So you do only get one shot, to be honest, man. One opportunity, yeah, you know and, what I mean? Like Eminem said. Like I was going to say. Um, you know, before I barf spaghetti on myself. Um, but yeah, it's, 
I think it's it's also like you're as good as your last product. I can't yeah. fail with the Vic Firth any ones and then say, Yeah, come on guys. Remember like eight years ago when I released that ride symbol? That thing blew yeah. up. They're like we yeah. couldn't care less. We don't Different actually company. We're, yeah. We're actually Zildjian. <laughs> in case you haven't read the giant Z's in your email. <laughs> Crap what yeah, you did, I love that. I love uh, that. So, anyways, man. All right. Well, let's get into today's episode, the main topic, which is becoming a teacher. I went back to it in, I think, like May of 2020, we did becoming an educator. And mm. I do actually see them as slightly different things, just terminology wise, in my head. Like, educator is somebody that, for a passion, for their career choice, has chosen to explain things to people, whether it be on stage, in a video in private lessons, in group lessons, in drum camps, whatever, you're an educator. Becoming mm -hmm. a private teacher, I think, is something different. It's a step to becoming a full-time educator, or it's a side part of, of being a full-time educator. But I think a lot of our listeners could be teachers if they wanted to. And I want to talk about what it's like, especially because you're doing a lot more one-to-one -one private lessons now. So how are you, when did you start bringing private lessons back into your career flow? Well, so, so I did a few private lessons um, years and years ago. If we go way back before like any of the bands that I was in, I was doing private lessons. Actually, I had one funny story where I was, I, I gave two lessons to, um, I gave two lessons, Scotty Johnson's texting me, I don't know what he's texting me about. <laughs> um, I gave lessons to this guy and he was really cool. Um, and at the time I was playing this really, really heavy band and we were like three okay. lessons in and then the mum and dad texted me, no, they emailed me saying, look, we've just heard your band. We really don't want you coming back and teaching our son. Shut up. No, yeah, I'm not joking. It was like, I mean, wow. the band I was playing in was like screaming like, oh, and it like yeah, yeah, yeah. swear words and stuff. And I think they were just a really religious family and they were like, look, we, we can't, wow. we can't allow this. And I was like, you do realize I'm not, I'm not screaming like fuck at your son right whilst blast beating i'm i'm also literally teaching i don't even do background vocals i'm not even <laughs> yeah. i'm not the one doing it i just play drums you know I, mean? I was like that's cool that's cool anyway so i used to teach a little bit and then in <clears throat> lta at the height of lta i used to squeeze i used to do like drop so like every saturday and sunday i would teach when i'm home from tour and i'll put up one Got post it. on instagram and i would do like first come first serve email me i'll literally just book in the first 10 emails that i see um Got it. and it was just like an amazing moment man of just realizing that people learn similar to me like like every drum teacher that moment where their face changes and they just they go oh my god mate that's amazing and i just got hooked so now i've got the time to do that because i'm not touring so much i've started again a couple of weeks ago and i absolutely love it um but yeah but respect to drum teachers man it's it's one of those things that you don't realize one how hard it is and then second of all well how hard it is to like actually teach someone and make them progress on the kit and and for keep sure them in, in you know interacted and having fun whilst pushing them that's really hard to do but then second of all as a business as a business it's really hard to do to like you know how do you book in um 10 how do you get 10 students a week and then when you when you have right. them how do you lock them in for a set amount of lessons and how do you make sure that you know they they are progressing it's all of these things that are actually really sort of underrated i think in 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 today's age totally. I think a lot of people just want to be like have a million followers on instagram play covers on youtube and play in huge right. bands and it's like mate you do know you can make a serious living and have such an impact on other human beings if you just knuckle down and like not knuckle down what's the word um zone in on like one-to-one -one lessons you know but yeah. it is hard yeah. it's really hard and that's what i'm having trouble with mate is like figuring out how do i get consistent people consistent lessons every single week so um yeah. that's one of my questions man it's it's what did you do when you first started teaching a lot of people did you lock them in f not lock them in but like say to them okay you have to put two lessons or three lessons or four lessons right. that's what I'm well we were definitely with. in yeah we're, you know you and i are or when I was teaching privately full time, it was so different because I was teaching people how to start playing drums. And I didn't, especially when I moved to a new town, which happened in my career twice, that I moved to a new place where no one knew who I was. And I just literally started from scratch. And I was just taking on mostly beginners, mostly people that just wanted to learn how to play drums from scratch. I was going to be their first teacher. Every once in a while, you would luck out and have someone that's a little bit more advanced. And you're like, sweet. We don't have, I don't have to teach you how to read 
notation or like some of the things that can bog down the lesson process. So in a situation like that, you're bringing on full-time students. Like you're committing, like you're not taking one lesson with me right now. Amber's booking some one-to-one -one lessons uh, for me right now. And those are just like what you do. Like it's this cost per hour it's set in stone, but it's one lesson. And then I may never see you again. That's so mm. different than I'm booking kids or teenagers or adults, but for like monthly lessons. So when it comes to monthly lessons, I was very strict with the policies. Uh, so I guess the one thing that I've noticed from talking to a lot of drum teachers around the world is my policies were quite different. I was very lucky to be in demand enough that I could set the policies that I thought made logical sense, which is you don't pay for lessons. You pay for being on my schedule. So I did half hour lessons um, and I was charging, I think, $30 per half hour at the time. This is, God, eight, 10 years ago at the drum lab, or I guess mm -hmm. 13 years ago. So anyways, half hour lessons and it was $30 per lesson, but it wasn't. It was 120 per month which basically said if you came to four lessons, it would be $30 per lesson. And that was kind of the going rate in town for music lessons and for other things that I saw parents dropping their kids off for. I would literally walk into karate dojos, taekwondo dojos, uh, soccer practice, and just be like, how much do you charge the kids? How much do you charge the parents to mm -hmm. for the kid to be here for this amount of time? So I kind of figured out the hourly rate was about $60 an hour for activities for children. So I just made it $30 a half an hour, but instead of doing it like that, the contract said it's $120 a month to be on my schedule. I will never miss a lesson because even if I do miss a lesson, I have this list of subs that will come in and teach you. So your, your child will never have the time where we just cancel their lesson. So mm -hmm. it is $120 a month to be on my schedule. Now I understand your kid might get sick a few times throughout the year. That's fine because every couple months there will be five Wednesdays in the month and I don't charge you extra for the fifth Wednesday of the month. So throughout the course of the year, it's all going to even out. Everything's going to be great. And if you show up to all the lessons, you, you end up getting like three or four free lessons. So mm -hmm. it was, but the big thing was we do not talk about makeups. There are no makeups. If you don't show up, I don't know what to tell you. I was there. And a half an hour isn't enough time for me to do anything. I can't leave because for the first 10 minutes, I'm wondering where you are. Then it's like I have 20 minutes left. I've, yeah. That's barely enough oh, no. time to like make a matcha. So, well, yeah, go ahead. What, I know, another question, mate. This is, this is so funny. This is like you're giving me like a consultation. I love it. I'm just like this is me, listeners. This is me genuinely like this is like a voice note. So, <laughs> so you, you – so say if you the lessons that you're you're booking in the Amber's booking in are they an hour yeah. forty five minutes or half an hour, one hour now. Um, so I the and the only reason they're an hour instead of a half an hour is because when you're dealing with more advanced students, which I am now, they can handle it. I don't think beginners can handle an hour of education. Mm -hmm. They don't need that much. In a half yeah. hour lesson, they walk in five minutes is me and them on a practice pad facing each other just shooting the stuff we're just talking while warming up our hands mm -hmm. and I'll, like i'll say all right single strokes with accents i'm literally playing paradiddles because i'm an idiot i don't know why I'm doing that. <laughs> single strokes with accents so we're just doing that and i'm literally telling them so how's your week been going i'm seeing how well they can handle a conversation while playing single strokes i'm looking at their yeah. hand technique i'm mm -hmm. getting some vibe all right let's switch to doubles we do doubles i'm like faster 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 all my students know that there's a hundred dollar bet. If you can ever play double strokes faster than me, you get a hundred bucks. So they're always chasing that thing and I'll push them until they break. We're good to go. That's the first five minutes. Then we jump on the kit and trade fills for five more minutes. And that gets me seeing their creative juices flowing. Like, okay, you always stay away from the kick drum when you play fills. I need to work in some more linear stuff. Or mm -hmm. damn, we did like 40 fills and you didn't do a single triplet. I'm I'm giving you too much 16th note material. We need to bring right. some triplet world into it. So that happens. So now we're to 10 minutes. The next 10 minutes is, hey, uh, bring out your papers from what we did last week. So it's a 10-minute review. Now we're at 20 minutes. The next five minutes is me teaching them the next step. They don't need to do it in front of me. They haven't even practiced it yet. Go home mm -hmm. and do it. So now we're at 25 minutes. And the last five minutes is me reviewing what they need to do and then doing the... I guess basically like the due diligence of 
making sure they can practice. Should they film me? Like, hey, do you want to pull out your phone real quick and just film me doing it for you so you know exactly mm-hmm. what to do? Or it's me jumping on the laptop and sending them Groove Scribe links and be like, all right, you have the Groove Scribe links in your email. So that's our 30 minutes done. And if you structure your practice like that, you'll never, or your lesson, excuse me, you'll never feel like, oh, this lesson's taking forever. It flies by so quick. Mm-hmm. That same half yeah. hour, if you just sit down and go like, so what do you want to work on? You're, you're effed. Game over. Yeah. 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 It's funny. It's funny you say that, like the one, how you start the one to ones. It's kind of similar to me, mate, really. Um, but yeah, that's something that I've always toyed with, like half an hour, 45 minutes or an hour. Cause it's never really 45 minutes anyway, is it? Cause people like to talk and you like to talk and it's, it sort of naturally flows over cause you're just two drummers hanging out. That's something that if I'm in a hundred percent transparent, that's something I, I struggle with sometimes when it comes to one to ones. It's like, I forget that this is a business really do you know what i mean i'm not just doing this yeah. solely for fun like this is a this is a we are doing this you hand over our money you walk away as a better drummer loving life and you want to come back for more do you know what i mean and i think that's yeah. something that i struggle with and that's something that i i worry about if i'm gonna let's say book out an entire thursdays of lessons back to back you know how late can someone be late at oh, all it doesn't matter do you, yeah 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 no, it so doesn't just, matter so if, like, if so if it's a one hour lesson and they get there 20 minutes late, it's a 40 minute lesson right, and there's nothing you. to talk about. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah, don't, yeah. you didn't pay for a one hour lesson. You paid for one hour of my time. I was right. here on time and I, I, I know to all the listeners, I know I'm sounding like a dick right now. I'm just telling you, I have literally taught thousands of students. This came out of getting screwed over so many times mm-hmm. that I, you know, and having my, my income fluctuate like, well. I made 4,000 this month and the next month month I'd make $2,800, but I had the same amount of students. I'm like, how, how did I lose $1,200, <laughs> but I have the same amount of students. It's like, oh, cause Bobby's yeah. mom was like, well, we didn't make it to three lessons. And I'm like, Susan, I don't give a shit. Like, yeah, oh yeah. man. It, damn it. Oh, oh, damn it. Oh, <laughs> son of a, I love it. Live <laughs> listeners. It happened. The LOLs oh. are happening. The, the LOLs, the chat's going crazy. No. The chat is going bonkers. They Damn it, Susan, it you do it to me every time. Yes, we witnessed All it. Right. Matt F. Yeah, but uh. no, it's true, mate. And I think I think a lot of people listening right now, people in the chat, people at home, people in their cars, whatever they're doing, I think people, like, like it, it's just a nice reminder that, like, yeah, the drums are amazing, but if you're a teacher, this this is your living. Time is money. And like, like you said, you can't fluctuate every month. You can't be like... Oh, cool! I, I did half the amount of money this month just because a couple of people couldn't be bothered or didn't turn up. And I think a, a lot of the, you know, we have we can learn a lot from other industries like fitness. You know, my brother's a PT. He right. just if people cancel, mate, he still charges them. It's just like a no-brainer. There's, there's um, nothing to talk about. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it, it's interesting, man. And and another thing that I found interesting was the whole time. Like, how do how long is too long i mean when people say to me i'm traveling from afar can you do two hours i just say nah man like two hours is too long like you will you won't you'll forget you know you're you're at at that point two hours your adrenaline you'll be getting tired it'll be going down you'll leave thinking you'll leave being less positive than if you left after an hour and i think that's so so important yeah when i have people that um so i just had was it matt jives i think it was matt jives um the guy, the British guy, you know, from Adobe, um, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. he came down and did a, a two hour lesson. And when I have those situations, we do an hour cause, and also there can be a lot, if you know, you have two hours, like let's be relaxed. We can catch up a little bit more, but basically we do an hour. Then we take a lunch break together. Like we'll go up to sociology reset, then come back and we do about another 45, mm-hmm. um, And so you just have to really, it comes down to planning. If you treat a two hour lesson, like it's a long half hour lesson, game over. You will not make it. You'll be staring at the clock the whole time. You have to plan it out. Like basically it's a tiny drum camp. It's a tiny masterclass. Um, Mm -hmm. If you treat a half hour lesson, like it's a shortened two hour lesson, the time will go by and you got nothing done. So whatever the time is, doesn't matter whether it's 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour, you just have to structure the time and say, okay, like, well, five minutes of this, 10 minutes of that, 10 minutes of that, 10 minutes of that, five minute recap, we're done. Then you're all set, everything's golden. Um, so that's a big deal. And then I saw Kieran ask about in the chat, 
hey, like, did you have these policies set in place from the beginning or they develop over time? Yeah, Karen, they definitely, they developed over time. You know, in the beginning, I taught for a store and it was the store's policy. So I never even thought about policies. Like, but when I made the drum lab, it was my chance to rewrite policies. And I, mm-hmm. and that's when I was like, no, like the parents would literally hand the store a different amount of money every month because they were like, well, he didn't, he or she didn't make it to these lessons. And the, and the people at the store would say, okay, then it's only $50 instead of a hundred. Yeah. I'm like, but I was here for all of those. Damn. I yeah, mean, full notification. Mate, <laughs> Scotty my, Johnson, honestly, it. it's like no, no one, no one ever texts me <laughs> apart from when I'm doing this podcast. Do you know what I mean? Oh, and then I all love the it. texts flood in. <clears throat> but mate, I think what what you're saying is 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 so helpful, man. And I think we had John Robs in the chat and Kieran. That they're, they're also saying really like good. That they're asking good questions. I mean, John, in a nutshell, said that he raised his price. Um, a few months ago and then basically seven of his students cancelled and he couldn't afford yeah. to take that hit so we sort of backtracked and, and kept the same rate and that's a really really hard thing to do isn't it like pricing you, th- that, yeah. that's one Pricing's thing yet tough. again being transparent for me that's where um i struggle with as well because i don't want to charge too much one because i think there's only so much you can do in a lesson i'm not going to touch your shoulder and you're going to become the best drummer in the world in an hour right. like there's we got to set expectations here like if you want improvement you're going to have to come back but if you want to come back i know you can't afford you know the, the higher 200 premium every single week so right. pricing is a difficult one sorry you, yeah uh, i think my, pricing... my wife i went there and i didn't know what you said Oh, I just said, yeah, you can't charge 200 per lesson and expect them to come every week. Like no one can afford that. Exactly. So that's why it, it does depend on, are you trying to be on my schedule? And that's what you have to figure out. And everyone has to figure out. Let's say just for random sake, we take, uh, Anna Canellis and she decides to open up a day of private lessons, just one day. She could literally charge 500 per student and it would be totally fine. One hour lesson, $500. And that's it, game over. Then that same teacher, so in this case, Annika says, no, no, I'm gonna teach regularly. Like every Thursday I'm teaching, I want you to be one of my students. Well, no one can afford 500 per lesson every week. So then she has to drop her prices down to maybe $75 a lesson, maybe $50 a lesson. $50 a lesson weekly is still 200 a month. That's a huge expense. So it's totally based on whether you're trying to get full-time students and that's what you want is that regularity or if you're just teaching the one-offs. So my cost right now for a one-off one hour lesson is $150. That's because you're coming in and I'm going to give it everything. And I'm giving you probably like three months worth of work in one lesson. Cause I don't think I'll ever see you again. Mm-hmm. If those same people wanted weekly lessons, I would say, all right, they're half hours and it's, it's thirty dollars. It's forty dollars. It's fifty dollars. I don't know what I would make it, but yeah, yeah, yeah. it would be mm-hmm. something they could afford. So it depends on whether you're doing it as a one-off thing, or if you're doing it regularly. So that's a big thing. Also, you have to look at your local area. Like, how much does your brother charge for an hour of personal training? Um, how much do, like I said, other activities? I mean, you have Travis. How much is nursery per hour? <clears throat> so those things kind of inform you on your pricing structure. And then the big thing is just, especially if they're going to be full-time students, is coming up with a contract that has all of these policies in them. And like I said, it's like there's no negotiating on price. Mm -hmm. If you are on my schedule monthly, it's $200 a month or it's $150 a month. But that's just it. And you just pay $150. And if you don't show up to any of the lessons, it's $150. Like. And then, and then from there on out, you personally, the teacher, you out there listening, you just have to over deliver on professionalism. You can never be late. You have to always, like when I'm with a student, especially when I had the drum lab, you know, I was teaching. So normally noon to eight, so 16 students a day, 16 half hours a day. Uh, you cannot come out into the lobby one minute late. It has to be on the dot so that that yeah. parent and that student knows you get 30 minutes. If I'm five mm-hmm. minutes over, that ain't five minutes into the next student's time. And what if Bobby's mom, what if Susan's all fired up and she's like, well, we did start at 1235. Yeah. Well, all right, Susan, we'll go five over. Well, now the next, but Bloody I go two Susan. over with Bobby. Now it's seven minutes over. I'm cussing all over again. Yeah. So you just have to be super professional with everything. Uh, the last thing I want to say, just because I know now that I've been to your studio and everything, d- definitely first lesson, 
you can go if they're late because they couldn't find it. I mean, I I did that a ton <laughs> in the drum lab. We were in a pretty hard to yeah. find place, uh-huh. so it was like, yeah, I know you're late because you just couldn't find the place. And I was teaching back in the days of MapQuest, so they like come in with their papers. <laughs> they're like, it's said to take a left on Manzanita, yeah. and I'm like, yeah, sorry, yeah. MapQuest hasn't been updated in a while. Yeah, man, mate. Uh, mate I, this is such. This is such. I hate to say it. I hate to be egotistical, right? But this is a bloody good episode, mate. We're, I feel like everyone's at home with their notepads out right now, man. But so I, I also know that there's a lot of people listening that will go, will have gone through what I'm going through right now and what I did do when I first started teaching drums. So what keeps the parents happy happy is like certificates and grades and progression that is shown on paper, which is factual, right? I really good music. point. Really good point. I can't. I can't bloody. I can't do the grades. I mean, I can play what's in the books, but I don't really know what those books are saying. And that was something that I really struggled with. I remember. So when LTA, my old band, had a studio basically near London in a place called Watford, there was another drum teacher in there who was just busy, man. He was just busy, busy, busy. Um, and I remember saying to him like because I was doing lessons on the weekend, but it was a completely different world. I was doing like these random one-off weekends of lessons, charging a little bit more than him, and he was just doing consistent everyday lessons. And he was like, mate, it's great. Parents want to see that graph go up. Um, And I was like, let me see one of these books. Let me see a grade three. Let me see a grade four. Let me see a grade five. And I was like, I genuinely don't know what... I, I do kind of, but not to the point where I could teach it confidently and get them through the exam. And he was like, right. "Well, that's that's what you need to sort of get into if you want the pe- if if you want to deal with the parents, not the drummers on their own." So, I don't right. know, man. I, I don't want to put you in the in the hot seat, but that's what would you say to Bring people listening who are going through the same thing as me? I would leverage the stuff out of that thing. I would. would you? I would. <laughs> good. Absolutely. Nice, good <laughs> Thanks, buddy. I would. <laughs> <laughs> For people watching live, you know what happened. Um, I would absolutely leverage the hell out of it by flipping it on its head and be like, all right, Susan, here's the deal. These grades were made up by people that never played this instrument professionally. These grades, honestly, I'm telling you from the bottom of my heart as a professional touring musician, these do not matter. Instead, what I've done is I've come up with my own curriculum and we will work through my own grades, but these are practical things. These will make sure that your son or daughter can actually play this instrument. They can jam with human beings. They can go to an audition and not freak out. So as we go through this stuff, I know that you want those other grades because that's what the world has taught us. Those are not real. Like there are so many people with the highest grade that still have never jammed with another human being and cannot play music. So I'm not saying it doesn't work, but the system is a little bit broken. And what I'm going to teach your son or daughter is practical education. And then like, yeah, then they, cause then Susan goes to soccer and she's like, Oh, Oh, is your son still doing the grades? Oh God. We have Eddie, Eddie, Eddie's a touring professor. You, you know, busted. Yeah. That's Eddie. So anyways, like he's doing it like way better. And it's just, it's just like a more comprehensive and wholesome thing. It's like, Oh, thanks Susan. Here we go. But yeah. she becomes your walking business card because you've told her there's a better way to do it than how it's always been done. So yeah, I would absolutely leverage the grades on a negative scale. Like I would just go the opposite direction. Yeah, man. That's interesting, mate. And mate, I'm loving it though, man. Like teaching, it was so, so cool to have a conversation with someone. I can't remember his name. Sorry. Sorry for getting your name, mate. But at the podcast we did, the live event we did at Graham Russell's, I got chatting. Oh, Ash, that was his name. I got chatting to a guy called Ash, and he was a full time teacher. Um, quit his job and just went full time into teaching. And I was just saying, like, isn't it amazing, like, how you can be a professional drummer, a professional teacher, make a good living, and you're teaching people to how how to play drum fills and drum beats. Do you know what I mean? Like, and you're making it's you're making more money than you were in your in your you know important job in your serious job and i think yeah. it's so it's such a good hustle man like i, I feel it really like is. i don't know what i don't know why but i feel like as of late over the last sort of couple of years like the hustle has been like pushed to certain areas of like you know streaming and and content and patreon pages and that kind of thing which is wicked but the one thing i've noticed about one-to-ones at the minute when people come down here is that people are dying for that stuff that one-to-one like interaction mm-hmm. and and actually being in the same room as a drummer and playing the same 
playing the same kit as someone do you know what i mean and i I'm, yeah. I'm loving it i'm truly loving it so today's been an absolute masterclass in just like okay how to how to level it up a little bit more and get consistent with it that's that's the key for me i've never had consistency i have i have a lot of dms and i have to sift through the dms with like okay you're serious you live too f you, you i don't you know i don't live in australia mate do you know what i mean you thought i lived in yeah totally Mel melbourne like it, it takes a lot of time so I'm going to add a thing to my website, which means people can book in, they can click in person or Zoom. It will give them all the information they need, and uh, and that will be that. But yeah, consistency is yeah. what I want to work out, man. Because I love. I think you could even course. leverage the money side of things too. Like if you are committing, if if it's a one-off lesson, the hour is whatever you decide, two hundred pounds, just for round numbers. If it's not, if you want to be one of my actual students, if you want to take the three o'clock spot on Thursdays. Now it's now it's down to two hundred pounds a month. Now you get four lessons for the same exact price as one because yeah. you're consistent. Um, you know, and I, you know, with our with our trainers, like my first four months with Cody, it's shockingly expensive, but it's <laughs> it's making me commit to it. Yeah, and I'm sure if I said, okay, I, how, what if I committed to two years, the price would drop. You know, so. I, I think that you can do it that way and then try to find those serious students. You know, for my teacher, Pete Magadini, you had to audition to be one of his students. And then he brought you on as like, all right, I've agreed to teach you. I've agreed to take you under my wing. I only have five students right now. But once again, it was like, it's this much to be on my schedule. Mm -hmm. And it was a two hour drive, you know, so those, you just have to kind of figured out but becoming a private teacher for anyone listening out there there's really only two things that you have to have to become a private teacher first one is a passion to explain things to other people the only reason eddie can do private lessons drum camps drum festivals is because he has a passion of explaining things you and i both know bro like how many pro drummers have tried to teach and they're they literally say screw that that is hell Mm -hmm. It's like, well, yeah, you don't you don't have a passion to explain things. That you have a passion to tour or a passion to record. Yeah, um, you, you have to have a passion to explain things. And then the second thing is the distance between you and the student. So a lot of people think oh, I'm not good enough to teach, and it's like, well, how, how? I mean, how good are you? Like, are you better than someone that's never played drums at all? And do you know proper technique? And mm -hmm. do you, you know, could you help someone get into this? Then, then absolutely, you could take on some beginner students. As long as the distance between you and the student is enough, you can teach. And as long as you have a passion for education, you can teach. And then yeah, you're man. set. Yeah. And then you can do this. You can make money from this instrument, which is amazing. Mate, Matt F. in the chat said something really, really cool then. He's a, he's a parent. He's got a, a son or a, or a daughter who's a drummer. And they do, uh, they're having one-to-one -one lessons. And it's done via grades in a thing called rock school, which I'm familiar with in the UK. Um, and he said... I would prefer a recording to take home, uh, to take away in place of a certificate. And I think that's amazing. I think that's such a hundred cool percent line. Like, I think, I think, um, yeah, I think I'm going to sort of <laughs> level up. Imagine that. that's could so you cool. Imagine showing Charlie from busted a certificate instead of <laughs> you actually playing drums. It's true, like, man. Hey, can it's I, true. can I be in your band? I have this certificate. Charlie would be like, I don't even know what that is. Do yeah, you exactly. have any recordings of you playing drums? Cause I'm not going to hire you to write a curriculum. I'm hiring you to play drums in my band. I need to see you play drums. So I think that that could be the thing too, that you leverage. I mean, you have cameras in your room, you have lighting in your room, give those parents or, or the students themselves, give them great social media. I can't even tell you how many people on Instagram's profile picture is a picture I took of them while they were here. Mate, you know I what see I mean? it all like, the time. I see that I, all, <laughs> totally. all the time, mate. And it's wicked. It, I love it, but it's just like, right. I swear but most people are coming to the camp now just like, look, listen. Just the, to get the some social was, media. The lesson was good, mate. Can you fire me? That, can you airdrop me that picture you just took? I need, you, I need a new profile. You're going to film pitch. us, right? I mean, you're going to film us and then you give it to us, right? Can you do it in raw? Because I'm going to color grade it myself. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, of course. I'll, I'll shoot it for you. It's all good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. all right. Well, I, I hope this helped a lot of you out there with the whole concept of teaching, especially contracts. Definitely come up with a contract that states the rules very simply. And no one else in the world gets walked over like professional artists. Stand up for yourself. You know, like... I never ask for a refund when I go to a doctor's appointment and the doctor is a half an hour late. 
I just sit there and take it, pay full, get my little two minute exam and go. Mm -hmm. We have to stand up for ourselves and be like, look, this is what it is. It's this much money to be on my schedule. And like I said, give them bonus things like I don't charge you extra when there's five Wednesdays in the month or five Tuesdays in the month. Um, that's a floating makeup lesson for any time that your son or daughter misses their lesson. No big deal at all. And then, like I said, you just have to have one or two subs in town and treat it like, especially if they're a little bit under where you're at, you treat it like they are getting the opportunity to substitute for you. We used to have that on mikeslessons.com all the time. Like, hey, do you want to build your profile? We'll come in. I, I, I got to go travel, but we'll still do the live streams. You'll just be teaching it. So Amber and... Mm -hmm drummer X would do the lessons for me when I was gone. And that elevated their profile because more people knew who they were. So mm -hmm. same thing with private teachers. So you just have one or two subs in your local area. You pay them a wage and say, okay, I'll give you $15 an hour or 15 pounds an hour, whatever it is. Um, so that way you're still making money off of the students while you're paying a substitute and you're good to go. Yeah, man. Man, I'm excited. So yeah, um, anyone who's listening who does want a one-to-one -one. i know this is a little shameless plug but i'm just i just want to teach now i'm going to add something to my website so instead of dming instead of like emailing and all that kind of stuff you can just go on the website and just see when a, when the it's like booking a haircut do you know what i mean online you just see when the available slots are lock it in and there we go man so mate but mate th mike thanks for being i know this isn't like an interview you know what I mean? But thanks for being transparent. Thanks for having me on the podcast, man. <laughs> <laughs> that, that quickly turned into like a profit interview. But honestly, mate, thanks yeah. for being so transparent because yet again with this confusing and just amazing instrument, like there's so many unanswered questions and so many people do so many different things. They, they do it in so many different ways, you know? Um, and it's yeah. just cool to be like, cool, let's, 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 let's get contracts made. Let's cover let's, our, yeah. our backs. Why not? Everybody else yeah. does. And I, I think that's what it comes down to is just being confident. Like, look, this is what I do. I'm, I'm, I'm good at this thing. I'm professional at this thing. And I think it instills more trust with the parents. If day one or the students day one, they come in and they're signing a contract. It's like, Oh, you do this for real. It's like, yes, I take this very seriously. Mm -hmm. Real quick. Yep. Trevor had a quick question. Um, Mike, when you started teaching at a music store, did they have their own curriculum? that I had to follow or did you always have control? So at any of the stores I've ever taught at, so I've taught at Drum Guitar City in Sacramento, the Drum Circuit in San Luis Obispo, California, and Skips Music in Sacramento, and then I also had the Drum Lab. But at all of them, I always had full control over my curriculum. And my curriculum in the beginning was built off of books that I had studied out of. So I would literally photocopy page one of future sounds or page two out of basic drumming um, by Joel Rothman, or I would just go to Kinko's and make like a hundred of the pages I knew I was going to teach. And then if I had a student, um, so before you go like, you cannot do that. Well, <laughs> hold on. If I had a student that was kind of gravitating a little bit more towards future sounds by David Garibaldi, like more of the funk side, then I would tell that student to go into the shop and like, okay, you need to buy that book because we're going to be there for a long time. So a lot of times I would have one page from a lot of books that I'd studied out of just to introduce them. Like this is Afro Cuban drumming. This is Brazilian drumming. This is funk drumming. This is jazz. Oh my God, you're way into jazz. All right. I need you to go, uh, by beyond bop drumming by John Riley, uh, Jim Riley, John Riley. Um, and so that's kind of how I did my curriculum. And then over time, I just started writing it all myself. I just, I was like, why don't I just write this myself? Because instead of telling them, don't do number two, number two is whack. I don't even know why they wrote number two. Just skip to three. It's like, well, why don't I just write out my own stuff? So Amazing. then eventually the curriculum became my own. Um, and yeah, good that's, to go. That's sick, man. Mate, um, another quick question um, by Steven. It's a bit of a subject change, but to be honest, it's something that I'm going through next week. So he said, do you have any t uh, trips or tips for the few days before recording an album uh intense week of recording next week which i'm excited about but yeah i'm going through the same thing mate so in about a week and a half i'm going to be locked away in the studio for for a week it's going to be long days wow. <clears throat> and um when i was shooting something last week or two weeks ago it was only a day in the studio and i remembered quite quickly how tiring physically and and mentally more mentally than anything especially when you're trying yeah. to record parts so um this week i'm just it's like a dress rehearsal mate i'm just gonna spend hours in here 
hitting hard because it's recording, sweating it out, and then just sort of yeah, dress rehearsal for the for the next week because I'm always surprised at how tiring recording an album is, mate. Because you want every part to be amazing. Oh my gosh. You're getting frustrated because you're making mistakes. So my my advice would be get in get in the studio, get behind the kit and do long hours and just go for it man just sweat it out see it is like a workout that's what i'm doing and it normally helps man because yeah sometimes technique goes out the window which means you're you know you're you're wasting more energy and you're getting more you know you're getting tired you've got the pressure of people watching you time is money all that kind of stuff so if you can just get in the studio get behind the kit and bang it out and bang it out and bang it out so you're not flapping in the studio that will uh, that will help massively. There you go. You might like my little roundup all the way to the start of the podcast. There we go. Professional podcaster. Tell you boys. Can't wait to hear those drum tones out of the studio. It's going to be awesome, man. Really looking yeah, man. forward to it. <laughs> all right, everyone, have an amazing, amazing day. I hope you guys had a blast. Uh, to all the patrons hanging out, uh, it, it it got pretty big. There's a decent amount of folks hanging out. So if you want to hang out with us live, please head on over to Patreon.com forward slash drum with Mike and Eddie. This podcast is 100% funded by the patrons and you have no idea how much we appreciate your support as we were travel making our eight hour drives from England to Scotland. Uh, just know that every time we pulled into a gas station to pump petrol, that was funded by you guys. And yeah. you know, we, we never took it for granted that the trip we were on was funded by the patrons and we appreciate it more than you know, but we also do need it to keep this podcast alive. So like I said, if you want to support us, we'd really appreciate it. Head on over to patreon.com forward slash drum with Mike and Eddie. The link is in the show notes below, but for now, episode 105 Ooh. is in the can. Beautiful. Boom. Nice one, people. Ciao, ciao. That was fun. That I mean, I love that. Love Oof. that. The great questions in the chat. I feel like a lot of people chat in the was chat on were, fire, mate. They were on fire, and I feel like from what they were saying, they 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 were going through the same or have been through the same sort of stuff of us. So it was just really good. Man. I loved that. Yeah. I was taking. I'm going to listen back to this one, mate. <laughs> <laughs> well, definitely for everyone in the chat, if you guys are still there, just know that you can always reach out to us. Um, maybe we can even create a little thread on the Patreon page, just so that we can have like a f open discussion about private drum lessons. Yeah, and, man. and yeah, I mean, the reason I started taking them back on um, is just because there's a disconnect sometimes with the education if it's only you and a camera or mm. only me and a camp. A camp is a group setting. You have to sometimes just sit down with one person, give them this information, and then realize, oh, my God, this isn't working. I effed yeah. up the explanation. I, I The delivery is wrong. And I'm glad I found this out with a one-to-one -one person. I'm going to tweak it. Everything's going to be fine. But I'm glad I did it here instead of doing it to a camera that could be seen by thousands of people and the delivery was incorrect. So yeah. that's why I told Amber, like, as soon as I get back from PASIC and this thing with Meinl, my year is done until, like, for, like, five months. Just book me, like, at least two lessons per week so that I can just be teaching human beings one-to-one. Yeah, -one. man. It's very really important. It's, it's so important, mate. I, it's 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 needed for me, mate. I love it. I absolutely love yeah, it. Man. So, yeah. Oh, All fucking right, hell! I'm, I'm looking press. at the clock. <laughs>